Hi friends! Meg's here. How's everyone doing today? So I just did a video for you guys and it was like the biggest train wreck of my life. So yeah, I'm going to try it again. <laughs> um, so first of all, how's everyone doing? Mm. I ran out of water. I hope everyone's great. It's so good to be here and I just wanted to do a little bit of crafting. Uh, you know, um, so I started another journal and I decided instead of getting out Halloween stuff that I was going to work on the three journals that I've been promising um, three of my people. So um, I have three sisters and I've made one of them a journal already a couple years ago and um, a little golden book, Raggedy Ann, um, a Raggedy Ann little golden book for one of my sisters. And then I have two more to make for my other two sisters. So in the order in which they were promised, I am starting with my sister Melissa's little golden book and hers is a nature um, themed little golden book. It's Wonders of Nature, but I'm also going to spice this up and put um, gnomes in it and all sorts of magical stuff, mushrooms and gnomes and things like that. Um, so I I just, you know, my I think my, my big huge nature junk journal is my most popular video. And I'm using a lot of the stuff from that um, journal, because um, like all the cutoffs and things that I've saved. I'm going to use a lot of those scraps for this journal because I have so, ma so much. <laughs> um, but this is going to be another really beautiful nature journal, just a, in a little golden book format. So I'm really excited about it. I just something about nature and mushrooms and gnomes. They just make me so happy. So that's what I'm working on this time. And then um, after this one, I'll be working on one for my other sister. I haven't decided what her theme is yet. Um, but anyways, so the the video. <laughs> so in the, my last journal flip through that I just put out the other day, um, I had a couple of things that I did in that journal that I wanted to do for this one. One of them was the pendulum pocket or the pendulum picture or the swinging hanging picture, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, and I just put that journal back. I would have just shown you, but basically there's a um, a picture at the the journal that excuse me, let me start over. I'm sorry. Um, I had a picture hanging from the page and it like was swinging back and you could swing it back and forth, move it out of the way. So it just reminded me of like a pendulum. So I thought, wow, I could do that with pockets too. Um, you could do it with anything. So if you want to do it with a picture, all I did was um, uh, took my hole punch, punched a hole in the top of your page in the center, and then put an eyelet in it. I'm going to skip all that because I've been having a really hard time with my um, crocodile. I don't know. It's probably me, but I've just been having a hell of a time. So I already did that part. Put an eyelet. You can use any size. That, well, I, I prefer the bigger hole, but you know, it's up to you. And then you're going to need some kind of string. I really like using the wax thread that I have, but it can be a real big pain. Um, it may take you a couple hundred times if you're like me to tie a bow, so that's something to think about. Um, you can use cotton, whatever you have. I like this because it's flat. This is flat wax linen thread. And then, um, let me get this out of the way. And so if you're doing a picture, just really quick, obviously you want to protect your picture. Um, if you're going to poke holes in it and things, you don't want it to tear. So all I did was laminate this, um, and I did not do a good job laminating this particular picture. I just wanted to show you as this was actually a throwaway picture because it's ruined in the back. But um, I was just showing you basically, if you laminate it, leave some space. This was supposed to go at the top, <laughs> so pretend it's this way. And so you would laminate it. I like to cut decorative edges. And then all you would do is, sorry, punch. Let me make sure I'm in frame here. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> you're, so if you're doing a picture, I just want to show you, um, you're going to laminate it or you don't have to, whatever. And you're going to punch two little holes at the top. One, two. And I know you can't see those, but there's two holes, one there and one there. Um, and then I put two eyelets there, obviously, and that's what you're going to hang your picture from. You're going to put the, um, you're going to put your string in the front. Excuse me. 
<laughs> going back like this and then you're going to do the same to this side I can barely see it and then you're going to tie it in a bow and then you have voila a swinging hanging picture a pendulum picture if you will but we're going to do a pocket so I started in the other video to show you this pocket and as you can tell it was a train wreck um, and I don't know if that's just because the eyelets didn't want to go into this fabric or what this one didn't come out too bad but this one was just I don't know they're just wrecked <laughs> so we're gonna try it again I really hope I don't destroy this one but I'm gonna practice really quick just because I don't want to trash it um, I'm thinking about using let me see I'm just gonna let me just get out my eyelets real quick and see I think I'm gonna use brown let me just find two that match. I actually forgot to get them out prior, so let me just get a couple that match. Um, let's see. That's gold. That's not bad. Maybe I'll find another one of those. Oh, there's one. I like that. Okay. And you know what? Let me grab one more just to make sure I have it on the right. I want to make sure I have it on the right setting. I just checked, but I just want to make sure because I will be so upset. I just sewed this pocket again. So I cut a piece of linen fabric that I have here. Or is this um, not linen? Is this linen? What is this called, you guys? <laughs> I, Anyways, this. This is what I had. I cut it. Um, just one square, folded it up, or one rectangle. I folded it up and then sewed around it to make a pocket and I'm going to use this to put lavender, a little lavender satchel in it to make it a scented journal. Um, and actually while we're waiting I'm going to use some fray check because if you use this kind of fabric you know, see it's already frayed all on the edges. Unfortunately I don't have the cool bottle with the little slicer at the top so I gotta be careful. So let me just fray check this real quick so that, oh, unless it's Gonna give me a hard time like everything else today. <laughs> but anyways, after I show you this pocket, which I'm it's pretty self-explanatory at this point, but I do have one more thing to share with you. So hopefully you're just crafting along with me. And um yeah. Why won't this come out? <laughs> okay, I'm just squeezing it over here to there we go. So I'm just going to put some fray check on here to stop it from fraying all the way down. So it does take a second. Sorry about that. I actually would have done this prior, but I forgot until right now. And I don't want to not do it. So I don't want it to start fraying any more than it already has. Because I do not want to sew another pocket. It's not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> I don't like this fabric too much. I like the way it looks, but I don't like working with it, you know. It's just kind of a pain. Especially when you sew it in the sewing machine. It wants to... The sewing machine just wants to eat it. It's like nom 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 food. Yum. Let me eat that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, cutting it with the... What is that called? The choppy scissors, as I call them. I know they have a name, I just forgot. It actually helps the fraying uh, go a little bit less. You know, it frays a little less. It doesn't fray as quick, rather. But it still frays, so you got to do it. Okay, and then maybe just a little bit at the top without gluing it together here. Almost done, guys. Man, it's really bad right here. <laughs> it's just all the way down. Okay. There. Lesson learned. Done. Good enough. And it's all wet now, but that's okay. Now at least it's not going to fall apart. And I'm going to have to wipe my hands off. Okay, guys. Now we can get to business. So I'm going to take my hole puncher. Oh. We wanted to make sure that this was the right thing. Okay. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. I have it set on B1, I think. So I 
I hope that's the right setting. Let's try it out and see. Well, it came out perfect here. Now let's see if it works perfectly on this one. Hopefully it does. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use my big hole punch and I'm going to do one on, on the top left and one on the top right. And I'm just guesstimating, you know. And because this is fabric, I am going to have to fandangle the hole a little bit. That'll do. And then we'll do the same on this side. That looks about right. There we go. Not perfect, but good enough. Alright, so fingers crossed. We're going to put this eyelid in there. And see if I got this right. Hold on, let's see. Yay, it worked. <laughs> okay, we got one down, one more to go. All right. Okay, you can do it. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. We did it. Yay, I'm so happy. Okay, we did it. <laughs> Simple stuff that makes me happy. Okay, so now we have our pocket. And then simply, I think I'm going to have to recut my strings because this does not seem long enough, but maybe. So I go in from the um, top on the right side, bring it up like this, then do the same on the, um, on the left side, on the top, bring it up, and then you're just going to tie a bow. And it's easier said than done with this wax thread, so please bear with me. I'm going to try to do it right now. I can't promise anything because I think I cut my strings the wrong size and also I just suck at tying bows with this wax thread because it is just so slippery. <laughs> it takes me like 50 times. Um, they came out perfect on my last journal because it took me about 50 times. So I'd be very surprised if I got it right now on the first try. Never do. See? Already making a mess. There. Go down tight. It's just so slippery. One more time. Come here. Okay. Oh. I know it's hard to see what I'm doing, but I'm literally just trying to fix my bow nice. <laughs> And once I get it to where it's acceptable, like that, that's okay. I'm going to put some glue there so it'll stay. And make sure that you don't glue it to your, um, to your page. Now, let me make sure before I glue this that I like it because I kind of wish it was a little bit longer on the page. But it is a long pocket, so I guess that'll do. And I kind of like how it's sideways, even though it looks a little not on purpose, because it's not. I kind of like, I kind of like it, so I'm going to keep it. There, she's a keeper. I'm going to put a little glue right there. Make sure, again, that I don't glue it to the page. But that does help keep it secure, especially with the wax thread. Like I said, it's very slippery. But I do like the wax thread because it's flatter than, like, a cotton thread. It goes flat. So, less bulk, and it just looks nice. So there we go. Yay! This video is much better so far. <laughs> Knock on wood. A little messier, but okay. So there's our floating pocket. I mean, I call it the pendulum pocket. I just like that word pendulum. It's so fun. <laughs> and so it goes back and forth. You can lift it out of the way and then write. 
on your page. So there you go. And you can do it with pictures. You can do it with a piece of ephemera, whatever you want. Just You can collage a journaling card and or a tag and just hang it from there. I just think that is so cute. So I'm going to put, um, lav like I said, a little lavender satchel that I sewed, uh, like flat, and I'm going to stick it in here so it smells like lavender because I love having scented journals. It's so fun. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you guys. And it even looks okay in the back, too. It just has a little hole. No big deal. I didn't do a good job, uh, but that's okay. <laughs> It was the eyelet's fault. Okay, and then the next quick thing we're going to do is really quick. I didn't make this up or anything, I'm sure. But um, let me make sure I put this in the right page real quick because I actually forgot where it went. <laughs> um, so while I'm looking for it, I'm going to... Well, I guess I don't know what I'm going to say. Let me figure this out real quick. And you can kind of look at the pages with me here. Um... I did the little golden book uh, story in the order that it goes. I used some really pretty handmade mulberry papers and um, lots of hidden small pockets. Like this is a tuck spot pocket that just kind of goes in. Lots of fun dyed papers and hidden pockets. This is going to be ha this is going to have all kinds of tricks in it. So I'm probably going to use some magnets in this one. Um, look at, I found this really beautiful vellum paper that just went with it so good. <laughs> I'm just so proud. Oh, this is a technique I'm going to show you guys. It'll probably be in the next video. It's going to be like a um, resist type of technique using Tim Holtz and Patty Pockets supplies. And it is awesome. So, um, so basically I am just looking for the spot that I took this out of and I just don't remember. So maybe I'll have to look later. <laughs> it might not be in this one. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do, oh, it's in this one. I'm sorry, guys. It's right here. This is going to go right here. Just like this. And it does add some bulk, but that's okay. Because I made a pretty big spine for this book. But doesn't that look cute? I love that. Alright, so the next one that I wanted to show you for the fifth time, I just said that, I'm sorry, is this. And it's pretty self-explanatory, again, once you see it. But I do want to show you a couple little tips just to show you guys. Um, I had a little mock-up. Here we go. So I just cut, okay, so so I called this, I, I named it something cute, the triple, triple flip tuck pocket page. <laughs> so it's three flips, one, two, three, and I've never seen anybody do this, but I'm sure they have somewhere. I've seen people do flips, but then I have on the other side three tuck spots with like a decorative edge that makes a perfect little cubby hole for three tags. Isn't that cute? Oh, I love it. Super cute. So basically, as you can tell, it's just a long, three long pieces of paper with a fold and a decorative edge, sewing, and then you glue it on. So, but just to let you know, um, your pages, I don't have exact measurements because it's obviously going to depend on how long you want your pocket or flip and how long your, how wide your page is and all of that. But for the little golden book, um, size page, um, I did a seven, oh, just under seven inch long length. And then, um, which actually would fit probably most books. Um, big books. Um, so just under seven inches and then in length and then two and a half inches wide was perfect for the height of the little golden book to fit three. So two and a half inches wide by just under seven inches long. I did use my scalloped, um, that's all glued up here, my scalloped edge on all four edges. So I just did the scalloped edge if you're wondering and then I ink I inked all my edges so 
the scallop edge looks like that. And then I went ahead and for the fold, I did about an inch, an inch and a half is perfect. So I went ahead with my scoreboard just because it makes it easier. Here we go. And um, I went in an inch and a half, scored a line, and then folded it. And then you're going to put that over your page like that, as you can see. But what I did first is I took it to my sewing machine. This is totally optional. And I did sew around all of it. Even if you don't have a decorative edge, just sew around the whole entire thing. It does look nicer. And then as far as attaching it, this is why I'm talking about this along, is I did this a few different ways, and this is the my favorite way to attach it. It just gives it added strength and um, also looks nice. So you could sew it on if you sew right here, right here, and let me... Let me show you guys. You're not standing over there. I don't know who I was pointing that at. You could sew it on the sides and then on the edge here, but that will leave, oh goodness, obviously that will leave, if you sew it on the edge, it's going to leave two, you know, random sewing lines, which isn't a big deal, but I didn't want that, but I still wanted the sewn look. So I did, like I said, I did the, the sewing pre attaching and then I went ahead and just put glue on this edge and on this edge and then glued it on and then went ahead and sorry I glued all three edges and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew after that dries and I use a stick uh, I use a sewing needle that you can use with glue it's a um, I'm just drawing blanks left and right right now. <laughs> um, it's made for glue, so um, an anti-stick needle, basically. And um, I, I do one so one line all the way down after I get them on. So I didn't do these ones yet. I just glued the edges, all three, and then made sure that before you know, made sure that my my tag goes in there good. And then um, once that dries completely, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and just do one straight stitch all the way down. And I'll probably go back and forth, do a back stitch, and just to make sure it's on there really straight. And you do want to make sure you do it, you know, right at the edge, but on the paper still, obviously. And that's just going to give you added um, support. And it won't look bad. You'll just see a little tiny line right at the edge. Uh, and, you know, it looks nice because it's sewing, so... So, I'm sorry if, if that seemed like I was over-explaining something super simple. I'm not trying to be like Miss Know-It-All over here or Miss Teacher. Um, there's, there, is some, there are some people who are brand new at this. I remember when I was and needed, you know, all of the information that I could get. And that's all I'm trying to give here. So, <laughs> thanks for bearing with me for that. Because um, sometimes I feel like I'm sounding too, like, teachery. Like, this is what you do. You gotta sew right there. And it's like, okay, duh, obviously. <laughs> I can see it. But you know what I'm saying, guys. Oh, fun times. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I, I think, we're well, it's 23 minutes in. Do you guys want to... Um, <laughs> answer me now. Um, maybe we can decorate those white tags. Yeah, let's just ink those up since we're here. I mean, why not? So for those, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, get out some... Man, this mat is great, but it really attracts a lot of dust. But I can't complain. I feel so good that I've cleaned... I wonder if you guys that watch... Um, if you can notice that my desk is cleaner and I don't have a bunch of clutter and I just feel so freeing to have just a clean space, a cleaner space. My room is still kind of messy, but I spent seven hours organizing both of my tables. I have a six foot long table and a four foot long table. Both of them were covered completely and I all I had between both tables was a like eight by ten inch spot to create out of 10 whole feet altogether of table I had an 8 inch spot to create because that's how crazy I let it go like that's how much I let it go and I know that sounds wild to some people but some of y'all are like I know what you're talking about girl I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> because it just gets that way doesn't it like out of nowhere you're like 
how did this happen? Like, how did this even happen? I'm not like a dirty person, but when you're creating, you don't want to sit and put everything away. You're like, okay, I need this, I need this, I need this. And then all of a sudden you're like, holy, you know what? Um, this is out of control. <laughs> so, yeah. But I spent like seven hours. I went through every paper, every scrap, everything. And then not only that, I cleaned the table completely and covered it with vinyl um, just to have a cover on it and that took a minute and then so it's easier to wipe up now I have this just you know cheap vinyl I didn't do a great job but um, I had to recut my line because I messed it up <laughs> but hey it's on there it's covered and then I got this oversized mat from Amazon that works wonders um, love these mats they're great Okay, so I'm like a walking infomercial, aren't I? <laughs> Alright guys, let's see what we got. Um, I'm just like wondering what colors I want to use. So we have like blues and greens and browns. That sounds good to me. Sprays. Oh, you know what we could try? Hold on, let me grab this. Sorry guys, let me see. So I have these. I told my husband, I'm not going to be in there forever. I'm going to go to bed tonight. And he's like, okay. And I refilmed this video. So now I have, I have been in here forever. Oh, I feel bad. Okay, so these are infusions. They're like walnut. Is it walnuts? Um, I don't know. It's like dye and then... It's a color, it stains and, but it, there's like some kind of walnut in it or something. I don't know. It's awesome. So I have different colors here. I don't know. There's in the navy. That's nice. We'll use that one. This one's got purple. I don't want to use that for that. This one's frankly scarlet. So I'm assuming that's red. I've only used them like once. This is terracotta. That sounds cool. Then I have sage. Ooh, perfect. Let's use sage and navy for this one. And then I need a spray bottle. Oops, I'm going to need more water than that. I think I got a backup water. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Now, I don't really know what I'm doing. I think I've used this stuff like once. Lame frame, guys. like powder and then whoa it's so magical cool <laughs> there's like orange in it I wasn't expecting that whoa so I don't know much about this stuff so I don't know how long look at that it looks like you can see the little like I don't know what that is it's cool but it's all running off. This isn't very thick paper. I didn't think about that. But I'm going to have to let it dry. Mm, I'm going to try something different for the next one. So let's do the back. Hold on. Okay. I mean, I guess that's kind of cool. I don't know. I'm going to leave it over here and then we'll do something. We'll use our oxides for the next one. Okay, I think I feel like I wasted a whole bunch. I didn't know it was like that. All right. Bye bye. That was underwhelming a little bit. Dun, 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 in a V. Alright. And then maybe we'll do... Come on. Okay. 
The problem is I can barely see what spray is where, the way I have my spray set up, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. Oh, I can show you guys this cool technique. Let's do that. I'm going to show you this real quick on this paper since we have time. One second. All right, you guys, we're going to scrap these two little guys, these two little tags real quick, and I'm going to show you something. We can always cut the tags out of these. This is cool if you have, um, if you have Patty Pockets, stains by Patty Pockets, and I guess this could have been a whole other video, but, um, it's fun. <laughs> so, I'm just going to take this, and then I'm going to take some Tim Holtz, um, Glaze. This is um, Micro Glaze by Tim Holtz, and it's amazing. You can do so many things with it. So I have Stains by Patty Pockets, Glaze, and then I'm going to use my inks, Oxides in particular. Now I'm going to use, what colors? Let's use Ground is Spread. No, 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 that's too much brown. Let's use some colors. We'll use speckled egg and rustic no. Hold on. Let me get my colors up. We'll use um, let's use the new one. Let's use that's not the new one. I don't know where it is. Okay. We'll use chipped sapphire Wilderness. All right, we're gonna use these three, I think. <laughs> Sorry, I can't make up my mind. All right, I have all my greens and stuff out. We'll just do this, and then I'm gonna get a stencil, maybe. I'm just grabbing any. I'm just grabbing any for now, cause I. I want to hurry up here. Okay. This will be an hour video, I guess. Hopefully people still watch it. <laughs> so I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to get, I'm going to stencil on here with the oxide real quick. So let's get some green. Just do a little bit of shabby shutters. Okay, shabby shutters. Now I'm going to go back up here with this. Okay, and then I'm going to do some blue. That might not be bad, but I'm thinking... Oh, what do I do, guys? Which blue do I use? Oh, that's nice. Okay, we're going to use... Did I put the right lid on that? Oh great, now I just confused myself. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're going to use faded jeans, I think.
That's cool. Let's do a little more. Um, all right, and then I just love lots of color. <laughs> so maybe one more darker blue. Just a little bit. Okay. All right, so we have this. <laughs> I feel like it needs another color, but we're just gonna we're just gonna go with that. Maybe I should put this. In. Let's do one more. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't use this much in the last one, so we'll see. Oh, you know what? Let's leave. Let's just do the outsides, and then we'll leave. We'll leave some white, because I think that might matter. I don't know. I just did this by accident, so hopefully it works. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I can't promise anything, <laughs> but it was cool. So, Okay, so what I did was I came in with... i got to get a rag real quick. Here we go. And then... I came in with the glaze, just a tiny bit on your finger, and you rub it on. And then you wipe it off. It's like wax on, wax off deal. You rub it on with your finger, and then you wipe it off, and it leaves. Um, it, it seals it kind of and it's supposed to make it like waterproof and all that kind of deal so you can't really stamp on top of it or anything like that it, and it also looks really cool see the difference I don't know if you can really see the difference but it, it's really like on camera but it, it's cool and it leaves a great texture it doesn't rub off on your hand now when normally if I do that it does so so basically I'm just using a little bit of this all over it I said rubbing it on or putting it on and then rubbing it off okay and then I got the stains out because it, it is covered now Hopefully it works, and it just left like a distressed look. Now, Patty Pocket stains, when you put it on, it just dyes it. It basically is like a coffee dye look. It covers the whole thing, and it's one color, um, just a, you know, like a coffee dyed. But if you use the glaze, it should, like, break apart and, like, start reacting because it's not, because it's, um, you know, it's kind of like a resist effect. Not kind of like it is a resist effect, <laughs> and I think I might be getting mold again, which is unfortunate. Hopefully, I don't this time. I got mold last time because I didn't use it fast enough, you know. But okay, so I'm gonna use my brush. I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. We'll see. It might just cover it. And if it does, it does. Then we'll make two tags out of this. <laughs> but it should start, like, breaking up. Like, look. You'll see. <laughs> you'll see. I can't really explain it. You'll see. If it does it or not. <laughs> Watch it not do it. That's hilarious. I might not have used enough um, glaze. Okay, so it's not going to work this time. That's weird. 
Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'll show you on what what I did before and it worked. So that still looks cool though. So we still made a couple tags. <laughs> oh, it might be working here. Nope, it's not doing it. It was doing it like right away last time. So let me show you what happened before. I think if I used more glaze, because I didn't use that much this time, it would have worked. That's okay. I still think it looks cool. Oh, it's starting to look it might do it. Come on, Kara. Alright, I'm going to leave it alone before I smear it everywhere. So, yeah, that's still cool, but that's not what was supposed to happen. So I did it over here, and what happened was pretty cool. I, but I did use a lot of glaze, I realized. I was using a ton by accident. <laughs> um, I just smeared on so much. It could be the texture of the paper, too. i got to see where it went. See how it kind of started breaking apart? Like immediately it started like like resisting the gla the patty pocket. So the glaze made it resist. And it started like peeling off. It was like opening up like cells. <laughs> but doesn't that look really cool? And now it's just like now it's dried on there and you can write on it, but it's it just looks really cool and distressed. So that's what I was trying to do. But I don't think I used enough. Um, like over here, I think I used less, and I used a lot right there of the glaze. So that's what I was trying to do. So I guess you can experiment and see if it works for you if you want to try that out. It's really fun either way. Even if it doesn't distress like this, it still looks cool using patty pockets over um, distress. So I love that stuff. It's really cool. So there we go. And I'll cut those into three tags to fit into our pockets or two and then we'll use this one. This is how the other one's drying. That's pretty cool. You can see the little walnut globs. I'll probably spray some more stuff on it though. Um, yeah. Alright guys. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't underwhelming. I hope you guys had some fun. It was the first time I've crafted it with you guys in a very long time and I had myself a good time. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. Um, yeah, if you like this video, you know I gotta say it. Could you give me a thumbs up? Maybe leave a comment? Something that could maybe help out the channel a little bit. Um, it really helps me if you ding that bell because then you'll be updated when I release another video. As always, I hope you guys are staying creative and staying safe most of all. Staying kind, all that good stuff. I love you. <laughs> Have a great day, you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!